being felt across the whole world. This is the significance of the correct place, the kaidan, or sanctuary. So through that, the Buddha's land spreads and inevitably, unkoku, securing peace of the land, is gradually achieved. So let's have a break now for 10 minutes and then we'll just look at the... Hurry up, please. Move as briskly as you can, please. We now uh, take a look at each of the passages which have been selected. The host exclaimed with delight. As the proverb says, the dove has changed into a hawk, the sparrow into a clam. How gratifying. You have transformed yourself through your association with me, and like the bramble growing in the hemp field, you have learned to stand up straight. If you will truly give consideration to the troubles I have been describing and put entire faith in these words of mine, then the winds will blow gently, the waves will be calm, and in no time at all we will enjoy bountiful harvests. But a person's heart may change with the times, and the nature of a thing may alter with its surroundings. Just as the moon on the water will be tossed about by the waves, or the soldiers in the vanguard will be cowed by the swords of the enemy, so although at this moment you may say you believe in my words, I fear that later you will forget them completely. Thank you. So here, Nichiren Daishonin at last is able to congratulate the traveler. That is to say, Nichiren Daishonin is the host, congratulating the traveler that he really understands now that the whole problem in Japan and the reason for the sufferings of the people is because they are following or they are being misled into following teachings which are false or weak and are not the true teachings of the Buddha. He takes Nichiren Daishonin about 40 pages of our English major writings to reach this point with this man he's able to say to him, you know, you're really a hawk or a clam now, ready to take action. And Nichiren Daishonin uses the words, you have transformed yourself through your association with me. We, of course, understand what that means. Through your association with the Gohonza, which is Nichiren Daishonin's life, he has transformed himself through listening to this man's wisdom. The traveler says he's prepared now to go out, stand alone, and do something about the situation. And in the passage before the ones published here, the traveler actually says this. After stopping giving alms to the priests, which is the best way, of course, to stifle the further spreading of these false teachings, Traveller says, then there will be time to dip into the waters of the law and to decide which are shallow doctrines and which are deep and to pay honour to the pillars and beams that support the house of the Buddha. So Nijin Daishonin doesn't remonstrate with him at all. He lets him feel that's the best thing to do. The important thing as a first step in the process of shakabuku which the Risho Ankok Ron is all about, is to help that people to understand the reason for the sufferings of the people. Then, the next step will be to give the real solution. So in that sense, although the Risho Ankok Ron contains preparation, revelation, and transmission, in accordance with all the teaching of all Buddhas. Nevertheless, in a sense, the Risho Ankokoran is preparation, the entire document, for the ultimate revelation of the ultimate truth, which of course would be the next step 
in the process of Shakabuk. So this is a good lesson for us. We have to teach according to the capacity and the nature and character of the people to whom we're teaching. In the, in the Lotus Sutra, in the Jigage, we say, Maiji Zazeni Iyaro Shujo Tokunyumujo Do Sokujo Jubushi. This means uh, I have always sought many different ways in order to lead the people to Buddhahood as quickly as possible. So we also must use that sort of wisdom. <clears throat> we should never panic, never bulldoze. When we do Shakabuku, it really must be based on the wisdom deriving from our daimon. No other sort of shakabuku will be effective. And through that, we will quite naturally, because of the workings of our Buddha state, find the right words for that particular person. Step by step. Also, uh, in NSUK, with our, you could term it, public relations, we're taking it carefully, step by step through things like our public lectures, which are now, I'm happy to say, uh, moving out from London all over the country in one way or another, through things like night thoughts, and radio broadcasts, and the old newspaper article. Gradually we're tapping, I feel, tapping a wedge into society without causing alarm or disturbance until gradually more and more people wake up to the fact that, oh yes, Nichiren Shoshu has been in this place for a long time. They can take it calmly. If we rush, bulldoze, attack, of course it could be disaster. So likewise, we mustn't attack the church. This afternoon, you'll hear at your discussions some guidance given by President Ikeda recently, just two or three weeks ago, to the Italian, to a group of Italian youth division members, where he reiterates that point. It's not good sense to attack the church, either in a general sense or in an individual sense. There is no point in attacking people who you discover are totally dedicated to their particular religion. We believe in the freedom of religion. Passionately, the right of human beings to do what they wish to do. Our job is to try to attract them and persuade them through discussion, debate, and most of all through actual proof to actually follow the ultimate truth of Nam Myoho Renge-kyo. We could defeat any Christian, for example, in debate. That's the problem. So much of Christianity is blind belief. <clears throat> so once I got so trapped in that way by being asked by a friend to give a talk on Buddhism, and when I got there I found there were about ten Church of England clergymen there. And I gave my talk, then they asked for questions, and the local vicar felt that he ought to uphold his position and started to ask aggressive questions. But it was so simple to undermine them until at one point I had to say, look, I really don't want to have to answer your question, because if I answer it, I'm going to undermine all of your beliefs, and maybe you'll be upset. <laughs> and he was upset <laughs> and walked out of the room <laughs> but I didn't want that to happen we must be very careful not to get never again have I got myself into such a situation of actually a confrontation with people who are devoted or dedicated to their religion. We have to be very careful about that. Of course we try through explaining the great Buddhist principles. 
But if they're obviously dedicated, we must even encourage them and say, please go on. There's no point, as Sensei said once to the Vatican ambassador, there's no point in us fighting Christianity. There is nothing strong in Christianity that we can't defeat. But if we tried to do it, we'd bring the opposition and enmity of a great many people of this country against us. And I tell you, we could set Kosenrufu back at least 50 to 100 years by doing that. Unnecessarily. So then, when Sensei was talking to the Vatican ambassador, he said, much better we go arm in arm together towards peace. Of course, what Sensei didn't say was that through doing that, through having, friend, having friendship with Christian people, they see the actual proof in our lives. And that is what caused them, will cause them to come over. The actual proof that's confronting them through their friendship with someone who's practicing Buddhism, that is the way to do it. So it's very important we all understand that. So we can stand up straight like the bramble in the hemp fields and through that uh, give incredible actual proof to everyone around us. This really, you know, is the purpose or the way, the method of our task where other religions are concerned. So of course one way or another still the ultimate aim is to gradually persuade people not to follow incorrect teachings, teachings that lead to suffering. So likewise, uh, another point arising from this, that we ourselves, of course, more and more through challenging this situation, discover the best way of life or the best path in which we can bring about change. Right, let's go on to the next paragraph. Now, if we wish, first of all, the calamity that occurs when enemies rise up on all four sides and invade the nation. Thank you. So I think I no need to dwell any more on the three calamities and seven disasters. Even the word bandits and marauders from other regions invading and the plundering the nation, we also see today uh, on an increasing scale in our own country. We haven't yet been attacked by terrorists from outside, but we certainly see a growing number of muggers <coughs> and murderers and internal strife. It would not be at all difficult for the United Kingdom to come, all of the United Kingdom, to become exactly like the suffering and horror we see in that part of the United Kingdom where Jim Miss Kelly comes from in Northern Ireland. It would be quite easy for that situation, for one reason or another, to expand into other areas. Worse still, of course, we could be, or Europe could be the battlefield of a future war. So there's no time to lose in that sense. Steadily and strongly, we have to advance to achieve this peace force by the 21st century. So this is done, isn't it? Through Risho, through establishing the ultimate truth in more and more people's lives. The worst of all, of course, is war. As Ricky, I think, mentioned yesterday, 30 million people killed in two world wars. 30 million. 30 million killed and 30 million doing the killing. 60 million people with the karma of war lodged deeply into their lives. So as I was saying on the first day, it's not by chance that you're here, but also it's not by chance that you were born in Europe. 
Or it's not by chance that if you're not European and came from somewhere else, Malaysia or Hong Kong, that you're living in Europe now. The karma of Europe must be in each one of us. The karma of war is deep in our lives. But this is really the most difficult, the most unfortunate karma in a general sense, in terms of general karma, which all of us living in Europe today have. The karma of more than a thousand years of war, of people killing and being killed, culminate, culminating in that huge number slaughtered in World Wars I and II. Women don't escape it either. They also incited men to go to war. They support him, and even went to war themselves often. But we're all involved in it. And this we have to change. So let me say at that point, you know, why was it then that President Ikeda first suggested we should have a European center back in 1974? None of us were thinking about a European center, I can assure you, at that time. We were certainly thinking and excited and thought that one day we'd have a center in our own countries. We never thought about a European center. Then out of the blue, Dr. Yamazaki rings me one day. This is just after I got back to this country. And he said, I've had an amazing message from the sensei. He said, how about the idea since they said of having a European center. Gija said to me, what do you think? And I was absolutely, I didn't know how to answer. <laughs> Why European center? But of course, as the years have passed, you know, clearly I've come to understand. How do we change the karma of war that exists in the lives of every European? Of course, it's by coming together and uniting in the great cause of peace and making causes to bring that peace about. So really, you know, Sensei's wisdom and understanding, so far ahead of any of us, really, because he sees paths we can't see, like birds see paths in the sky or fish see paths in the sea because that's his layer of the cake. So this is why, you know, one should never reject anything President Decatur said. Always, if we don't understand it, we should chant about it. And now I realize he was thinking of nothing else that, but that every European member could change their unhappy karma and above all, prevent a future war because if Europe changes its karma of war, it will change the karma of war in the whole world. Do you see? So this is why you know, we're supporting the European Center through this suggestion of senses. And the more we go on supporting it, the more we go on courses to trace, the more we seem to get a clearer understanding of the importance of coast and roof of Europe not only coast and roof of our own country. So, of course, coming up, we'll have the opportunity to contribute to the European Centre. So, like the other contributions for the first building and the second building, certainly I, for one, will give everything that I'm able to give. Because I now understand better than I've ever understood the significance and importance of the European Centre for not only our happiness, but for the happiness of future generations. It's the prime point, that Gohonzon is the prime point to change this terrible karma of killing and being killed. That there can be no doubt whatsoever. As Sensei said once, our organization is based on deep relationships between human beings. 
When I first went to a European committee, maybe you've heard me mention it before, but such extraordinary... I thought I was the most international person. I thought I didn't have any racial feelings. I prided myself on it and blow me down. I go to my first European committee meeting in 1975 and the most appalling feelings are rising up in my life about poor old Peter Kuhn, because he was a German, and about poor Mr. Bernard Valet, because he was French. I couldn't believe it. I was really sick of myself. And I had to go away and chant lots of Daimoku before the next European committee meeting to change this thing in my life. These things are so deep-rooted. But through practicing to the European Gonsal, through going there on courses, we can change it. So every time one goes on a course to Tretz, or every time one makes a contribution towards the European Center, we are changing. It's another notch, isn't it, in changing that horrendous karma that we have in this continent. So in every sense, uh, this understanding of the need and vital importance of the European Center is very important. Moreover, as the Nino Sutra says, says in the Gosho, the person and the law. He says, since the law is supreme, the person is respectworthy. Since the person is worthy of respect, the land is sacred. This, of course, is through Esho Funi. If we activate our Buddha state through the principle of Esho Funi, the inseparability of us and our environment, inevitably the land, too, will become the Buddha's land. And also, of course, not just the land in terms of the boundary of this country or the boundary of this planet, but also the space around it, further and further as far as you can see. The effects of that Buddhahood are bound to be felt. And most important in the light of these teachings, three calamities and seven disasters, the Shoten Zenjin, the forces, of the natural forces of the universe that protect this planet, that protect each continent on it, that protect each person on it. Okay, one of them is the law of gravity. Such forces will then continue to work in our favor, in harmony with our own lives. But if we turn our back on the ultimate truth, on nam myoho kyo then inevitably the powerful negative forces in this life or in this world take charge of us. Our lives become negative and therefore the Shoten Zenjin, the protective forces of the universe, cannot work. They're essentially protective, positive forces. So instead of being protective and positive, they're neglectful. And we suffer. So a stupid example I always give is the sun. The sun is a Shoten's engine. We mention it every day in the first prayer of Gongya. The sun is the great nourisher. The sun keeps us healthy, but the sun can also destroy us if our life state is stupid and negative. If we're idle and lazy and idiotic and stupid, we lie in the sun too long, and our skin starts to become destroyed and uh, also you know, the moisture in our body begins to be dehydrated. Which do we want? Do we want the sun to be our protector or do we want it to destroy us? In a sense, that's the choice. So the first prayer of Gongya, we're not bowing to these Shoten Zenjin, the forces of the universe, as if there's something in control of us. On the contrary, we're punching our life force into them. We're taking them into our Ichinen and pouring our life force through Daimoku to them so that they are working with that positive life force and functioning correctly as our protectors. Now this is the key point, isn't it, so far as the reason for the situation in the world. The people are crushed and apathetic or frustrated and angry 
They are negative in so many places. Therefore, the Shoten Zenjin can't work anymore. Therefore, the people and the land is, in one way or another, destroyed. The people of the Horn of Africa have been crushed and cowed by poverty and sickness and by politicians who are using them in the wrong way because of their apathy. And now the land is destroyed or being destroyed. Isn't it? This is the fact, the reality of the situation. I long to hear one day that at last someone, you know, with the Gonza has established themselves in the middle of each tribe. Wow, what a change it's going to bring about. This is their karma. It's very hard and very heavy. So this is our task, isn't it? To establish the ultimate truth. And make sure that more and more people, particularly our job is in this country, there are plenty of others can do it in France and Germany and Peru and Chile and Hong Kong. Our job is to spread this understanding to more and more people. And of course, it's difficult to explain. Therefore, actual proof is the best. And that is very natural in this Buddhism. We shakabuku, people start chanting, they get proof of benefit in their lives, and then they begin to understand the workings of the universe. Therefore, the more people that are doing that, the more the Shoten Zenjin are working in our favor, the more we are changing our karma. Right. Emperors and kings have their foundation in the state and bring peace. They will quickly leave the world of the living and fall into the hell of incessant suffering. Thus, the Daijuku Sutra says, Though the ruler of a state may have for countless existences in the sort his heir, the high ministers of the state, the lords of cities, the village heads and generals, the magistrates of districts and the government officials. So in the first part of that passage, Lijun Daishonin talks about praying for order and tranquility throughout the four quarters of the land. I no need to dwell on that. That is lifting our heads up, isn't it? and looking at the four quarters of our particular environment. If you like, looking over the wall round our backyard and seeing what goes on beyond and becoming concerned in it. That is what Sean and Jane Seymour did, or are doing. Becoming concerned and determining to change what is beyond their little narrow patch. This is the achievement, isn't it, of uncock, And inevitably, in the end, the Gonzan will lead us to do it. Risho, the ultimate truth, you know, will lead us more and more to expand our view of life, to take in the four quarters of the land of our particular environment and do something about overcoming human suffering there. This I'm sure of, because it's a natural process, isn't it? So we see all around us constant reminders of the need for action. Unkoku is action, isn't it? So I'm sure from now on, whenever you open your newspapers, whenever you look at the news, you can't help but be reminded about the message of the Risho Ankokuro. You can't help but have your spirit, the spirit of Risho Ankoko, lifted up in your hearts. Everything we see that's going wrong in the world is a reminder for us, isn't it? To do shakabuku, to take responsibility for our path of life or our sphere of action. And really, through the weapon of our daimoku and of shakabuku, the combination of the two, to bring about change. It's not something vast, is it? Kosanufa begins right here with the firm establishment of Risho in us. And Ankoku begins in quite small ways, talking to people over a coffee, giving them a new slant, asking someone to practice, to 
try it. Suggesting to the manager of your department, wouldn't it be better to do this this way? Then people wouldn't be so bowed down with that awful routine task, etc., etc., etc. This is Kosenruf. Kosenruf is not some huge ideal. Kosenruf is where we are now. That is where Kosenrufu is. So if we feel, oh, well, I don't feel this is my true mission. I haven't found my mission yet. Yes, you have. Your mission is right where you are at this very moment in time. And of course, through challenging that, through giving yourself wholeheartedly to Kosenrufu, to Risha and Ankoku, you will make all the causes to take you on the next step. And so your path widens and widens as like a great river as your life goes on. So this, you know, understanding this is so exhilarating. We're, we're bowed down by what we see, but understanding this is exhilarating. This is the way we do it. So I really hope that all of you men here today really go off now and feel, now I really understand, now I'm going to do it. Hmm? And that you pass on this to everybody else gradually. I know you're going to do it. Thank you very much for listening patiently.